Day 49 in my pilgrimage around Shikoku. I have hit all 108 temples on Shikoku. I've hit all 88 of the main temples and all 20 of the Beikaku, so I'm pretty psyched. Today was focused all on hitting Bangai 20. I left my hotel a little late because of well, breakfast didn't start till 7, so I got out of the hotel about 7.30, and it was about a 12, 13K hike up the mountain. Uh, Bangai 20 is at 918 meters. It's the highest temple on the pilgrimage, I believe. So the morning was just spent hiking up. Not many places to stop or rest because not many people go up to visit it. It was a very, very cold day and windy. No rain, but just very, very cold. And at times I had my down jacket back on, it was that cold. Uh, made it to the top and this is a temple, Bangai 20 is a temple that Kukai actually visited. Of the temples I visited, the 88 main temples and the 20 Bangai, there are legends that Kobodaishi did something in each and every one of the temples. But as a historian, the reality is that we only have evidence of Kobodaishi actually being at a select few of the te actual temples. And Bangai 20 is one temple that he was actually at. Uh, it's one of maybe three or four temples that he was, we know he was actually at because he wrote about it. So in terms of historical importance, Bangai 20, pretty important because Kukai was actually up on that mountain where I was today. In terms of actual temples, it was really rather disappointing. There's kind of a main hall. The bell tower was dilapidated, falling apart, and the Daishi Do was like a guy's house. In terms of uh, actual temples, it was really kind of disappointing aesthetically. Uh, the monk at the temple was very friendly. He saw that I was, I talked to him because I was like, I just finished my pilgrimage. And he was, uh, gave me a water, a bottle of water and an apple. Uh, so it was very really kind and generous. And just as I was leaving, a, a tour group came up and I talked to them. I was actually in their uh, memorial picture. The driver goes, get in the picture. So I got in the picture. So I'm in this, this group of people who travel the Bangai. I'm in their memorial picture. I then headed down the mountain and it took several hours to get down the mountain. And I was heading to uh, temple number 10. I want to close the circle. And I didn't quite make it. Uh, I was rushing to get to the hotel, and uh, by all accounts, I was going to get to the hotel a little after six. And I made a mistake in thinking that I'm staying at a place called Ryokan, but it's actually been converted into a business hotel. And in a Ryokan, you have to sort of show up by 5.30, way before six, because they're making dinner for you. But this is a business hotel, so I could have actually showed up a little bit after six. I would have probably gotten here by 6.30. Uh, and I didn't realize this was just a business hotel without food, because otherwise I would have picked up food at a convenience store. And there's no convenience stores nearby. Uh, there is a restaurant nearby where I had dinner, but there is no convenience store for like breakfast. Uh, in short, I was heading towards this hotel kind of booking and within, I got to within six kilometers of the hotel and then decided I better call a taxi. So I got a taxi to take me to the hotel and then realized, oh, I didn't have to get here so quickly because I didn't have to, they don't, meals aren't included in this hotel. Uh, I might have known that when I booked the reservation, but I was booking so many one day that I kind of lost track of who's doing what. And it might have been just as well. I'd already walked about 24 miles today, so that last hour would have been pretty exhausting. Still, I want to complete the circle, so in the morning I'm going to grab a taxi and go back so that I can hit this last, basically, four miles to Temple 10, so I can completely close the circle. After that, uh, take trains or whatever I need to, to visit the temples. So this is kind of my last signing in. I finished the pilgrimage. Uh, tomorrow there's five miles that I want to finish to close the loop, but for all intents and purposes, I finished the pilgrimage. I set a challenging task for myself. I wanted to do a sabbatical where I would do something that I would remember, go on a great adventure, and this has been a great adventure. I've learned a lot about Japan, a lot about sort of walking history of Japan, about the countryside. Uh, I've learned a lot about myself and pushing myself to walk about you know, 20 miles a day. Uh, the 88 temples in and themselves is a challenging task and adding the Bangai made it a little bit more challenging, especially because some are hard to get at with inns. But it was a 
great adventure. Uh, I want to thank Kukai Kowadaishi for the pilgrimage. Thank the people of Shikoku for their kindness in all ways. Everyone has just been so kind and generous as I've been walking. The fellow pilgrims who I've met along the way and talked with have been inspirational. Uh, I've walked more in my life during the past 49 days than I probably ever will again, but I'm not adverse to walking the pilgrimage again. Most of the pilgrims I met were retired men in their 60s, 70s, and they inspired me to maybe, when I'm in my 60s or 70s, to try walking it again. I want to thank my family and friends for all their support, especially my wife, Aiko, for letting me go on this great adventure while she maintains everything at home. Uh, and I'd like to thank all of you for watching and supporting me. Uh, I hope it's been interesting. It's been fun to kind of reflect on each and every day at the end of it, of what I've done. It's a little hard to edit. It's a little strange. Uh, the camera is only like six inches from my face. That's why there's always reflections in my eyeglasses, but I can't zoom in on my iPhone as I record. Uh, and it's kind of strange editing me, but it's been a great experience. Thanks for watching. I'm going to keep editing videos on the uh, temples and would love if you could watch some of those as well. All the best. Thank you.